Hi. Congratulations, first of all, to rank four, Himanshu Jain. He has achieved his great achievement in his second attempt at the age of 23 years only. Uh, to give his background in short, uh, he has done his BA from Hansraj College, very prestigious college from Delhi. And uh, he was also All India subject topper in 12th accountancy class. So uh, this kind of a person who, ha who is very much hardworking, and has cleared uh, UPSC in his second attempt at uh, with the rank four. So we would like to hear from you about your strategy about UPSC civil services. And first of all, I will give you an opportunity, whatever you want to discuss with the students about your journey, about your strategy. So hello everyone. Uh, this is Himanshu Jain AIR uh, for uh, UPSC 2019. And uh, I would like to share my journey, uh, which was, uh, not too long because it doesn't require too long a journey to clear this uh, exam uh, what is needed is uh, only discipline and consistency with which you should uh, study work hard every day without a break and uh, you should uh, uh, do your best and have faith in yourself and ultimately you will be able to achieve your goals so uh, i started my uh, dedicated preparation for upsc after my college was over in 2017 uh, so I gave my first attempt in 2018, could not clear prelims, uh, um, scored very less in prelims, so learned from them there. And uh, then I started working hard again. And uh, after learning my lessons, I started preparing in a different manner for the 19 attempt. Uh, I gave the attempt of 19, uh, which got elongated due to many reasons, delayed result, delayed uh, interviews, and then again delayed result. But ultimately, uh, when they say that Sabrika Fal it turned out to be true to, for, my, uh, for me. And uh, I got uh, a rank of four, which is very uh, good and amazing thing in my life. Great, great. You must be very happy and you must be satisfied after your uh, last two, three years of uh, working hard for this success. Yes. Uh, you just told me that uh, you scored little less in your first prelims. Uh, may I know uh, what was uh, the strategy that was not perfect for you in that attempt and what did you learn and improve in this attempt? So what happens is uh, when we start repairing and uh, we uh, give our attempt of PT, we do not uh, know what, how many, the first foremost point is we do not know how many questions we need to attend. So in my first prelims, I was afraid of a negative marking as well as uh, uh, overconfident of my answers that uh, they must be right. So I attempted only 67 to 69 questions and uh, which ended up with me, uh, me getting out of the race and uh, uh, I scoring very less marks in prelims. And so my journey uh, for the first attempt was over then and there only. So what I uh, learned from there is that uh, uh, one needs to have a, a balance of uh, their own uh, capability, their own accuracy of the answers, as well as uh, the number of question one attempts. Then I realized after solving that uh, even if I do 70 questions uh, in a prelims or 72 questions, then there would be 10 questions which I would definitely not know and I would be just uh, guessing them. And then there would be 10 more questions which I would think that uh, they'll be right, but uh, they are wrong. So uh, if you get 20 questions wrong and uh, 50 questions right out of 70, so what happens is uh, there is negative marking of 20 by two third. So you get uh, marks uh, of around 90 to 92, which uh, does not get you through prelims. So I uh, started uh, uh, again for prelims on, uh, only. Uh, in the prelim strategy, what I, what I changed was that uh, I try, uh, tried uh, answering at least 80 to 85 questions. So this time in 2019 prelims, I answered uh, approximately 83 to 84 questions, which got me through because even if uh, marks uh, may be close to cut off, but uh, uh, there is a sufficient chances that uh, uh, you can get through the exam. And yes, yes. Uh, so I was saying that uh, you have told before that you prepared for the prelims uh, in sh relatively short amount of time as compared to your mains preparation. So how to prepare for prelims in such a short duration? And what would you advise for the students who are appearing on 4th of October prelims to have their strategy on the day of prelims examination? 
Yes, sir. So what happens is a uh, short uh, period of time which I, I talked about was that uh, of the revision time, uh, revision period. That uh, uh, what uh, happens in the last uh, 30, 40 days uh, approximately is that uh, you revise everything. You can't uh, 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 get new things into your mind. You get only the old things which are needed to be repeated uh, so that mind uh, gets them uh, fre fresh. So uh, preparation uh, happens over the year, but uh, at the end, what happens is uh, you need to uh, start revising things. So I made a 30 day plan because uh, uh, till 24th of April last year, uh, uh, there was some event uh, function in my family and which was necessary. So after 26th, I started and made a 30 day plan for prelims, which was on June 3. And uh, for that, I uh, made plans for all the static portion as well as the uh, current portion. So what I would advise is that do your static portion first because static portion gets you through a lot of uh, marks and there is uh, some more relatively more stability and uh, surety of uh, uh, questions coming from the static portion. Okay, so the static portion could be uh, done by revising the NCRTs. Only I did not do anything else. I did NCRTs only and the basic few books which uh, I'll be mentioning uh, during the conversation. So I did only NCRTs and uh, during the revision frame and uh, also the notes that uh, I have made that I have a screenshot or uh, that uh, I have saved on my uh, uh, computer. So all these things were uh, all the things that I did during the 30 day plan. Uh, after 20 days of uh, uh, this static portion because it requires 20 days and because since it is so huge, I started preparing the PIVs. So PIVs I prepared for seven to eight days and day and night I did all the PIVs uh, day wise, date wise, uh, which are available online. And also with along with the PIVs, the mentioned schemes or the mentioned uh, uh, issues, anything that was mentioned in the PIV, I Googled it. I uh, Googled it from the authentic government websites. I Googled them from various digital platforms available, uh, digital information platforms available online. So I Googled everything. And in those 10 days, I uh, did the PIVs. I did the topic wise list. I did not refer to any uh, current affair magazine particularly, but I, what I did is was that I uh, mark the topics that were mentioned and I search them for by myself. It could be from Wikipedia, it could be from any site you need to know uh, the basics of that information because uh, what happens in, prel in prelims is that they don't ask questions which are uh, uh, too far away and uh, too far uh, in depth into it. They ask questions which are popular, which uh, some group of people might have heard, for example, uh, the basic a short name for any missile which became popular or uh, for example, uh, uh, there was something uh, which became uh, there was uh, something which uh, became popular and it got, uh, did not come into the newspaper, but it came into the PIBs. For example, Green, uh, Green Deeds Movement, uh, something like that. It never came into the newspaper, which we read. It never came into the online, uh, uh, these offline uh, magazines, but it was there in PIB. So uh, these kind of information, you need to make the bullet points and Google yourself, research yourself on those topics. And you will get through prelims very easily, I assure you. Okay, so uh, when we were discussing about current affairs, you mentioned that you were reading newspaper, you were reading PIP, etc. I did not find mention of monthly current affairs compilations that many of the students are these days using. So what would you advise students about uh, these kinds of compilations? So uh, uh, first thing is that uh, uh, you need to define your sources because without uh, sources, you'll be uh, roaming here and there wasting time. So once you define your source, and the second thing is the consistency that you have to be consistent with your source and you have to trust your own source. Do not uh, uh, be misled by others that your source is not uh, trustworthy. If you have confidence in yourself and your source, you'll be doing it very fast, very easily, very accurately, and you'll be doing it in very short amount of time. So uh, this is about the strategy how to, uh, about the source. Now, how to find a source? Uh, you can uh, become comfortable with uh, a magazine that is available in the market uh, for any from any institute. So once you get uh, comfortable with that magazine and you get confidence that after doing that magazine, you are able to solve PT paper mock test uh, very easily, then you can go with that magazine. 
otherwise what i did was i did not refer to any particular magazine i used to refer to a magazine but then they changed their pattern and i then decided not to follow it so i what i did was i made bullet points that, uh, like i said from rajya sabha tv debates all the topics that were uh, there in rajya sabha tv including hindi topics as well as english topics so i made a bullet point of those topics and uh, uh, then what i did was uh, i googled it as i said secondly about the current affairs i read newspaper made uh, my own uh, uh, encircled notes uh, in the newspaper very short very very short uh, in, uh, let's say uh, the main points were only included and then i googled them myself what happens is uh, when i when you google it uh, anything which is the most popular thing about that topic uh, comes uh, into the forefront and that is what we need for prelims so second thing about, uh, is newspaper first is uh, the the uh, rajya sabha tv uh, topics and third is uh, uh, as i said pivs and fourth was uh, the topics as i said from any magazine you uh, only see the index index covers everything uh that is need to that needs to be done and uh, then google the index by yourself it will help it will definitely uh, you know when you search for information by yourself information is not fed to you by someone else you get more information fed into your own mind so that's the four basic rules that i did for prelims current affairs nothing else okay okay and uh, you have already talked about now the sources and uh, strategy for current affairs and static portion so i would just like to know the actual d day strategy for your prelims examination the number of attempts did you go with the round 1 round 2 round 3 techniques or you solved all the questions one by one so uh, prelims uh, exam paper uh, doesn't start at 9 but uh, i think it starts at 6 uh, uh, or 5 when you wake up in the morning and uh, the mentality and uh, your mindset and your calmness which you evolve during those 3 hours of reaching your center is very important so i do not believe in studying at the last moment i uh, used to stop studying um, the previous day before uh, the prelims is actually there so uh, by uh, the evening of uh, before prelims i uh, used to calm myself and uh, i ended up talking to a friend of mine just normal talking not about exam so what happens is after uh, and the, uh, we try to all try to sleep before prelims but we do not get enough sleep because uh, there is pressure but uh, do try to sleep do not open books and uh, at night and uh, when you wake up in the morning even if you are uh, sleepy do wake up get yourself refreshed and uh, keep smiling till you reach the center because uh, a dull face uh, uh, becomes more dull when uh, other people see you and uh, they give you an equal reaction so a smile with a smile uh, makes it a bigger smile so what happens is when you reach the papers uh, the exam center uh, smiling and happy so you get uh, more confidence uh, and uh, you enter the exam hall do not uh, hesitate do not do anything just keep smiling and uh, uh, i uh, when i uh, when i entered the class i sat there with my eyes closed and do not uh, and keep i keep smiling and uh, not take any not think anything okay so uh, ultimately when exam uh, the question paper comes we open it and we see it so what strategy i adopted was uh, i used to answer questions in the question paper first of all those questions which uh, uh, i was pretty 100% sure so i uh, marked them on the question paper and uh, uh, with a black pen i put double tick on the questions which i had solved and which were very easy next uh, what i do is i try to solve the questions which are uh, which i am 90% or 95% sure even if there are some questions like that after doing that i count them uh, i count these questions and i uh, uh, you know try to uh, mark them on the uh, in the omr sheet so once this exercise is over i count to how many questions i have written so in this exam i could only uh, do 50 to 55 questions but my target was 85 so i had to uh, mark 30 questions with uh, uh, second or third guesses so i again made a round of questions from 1 to 100 about uh, so i found uh, uh, 12 to 13 questions so once i reached 66 mark uh, no no it was 72 mark and then i had to do 
this exercise again it was very difficult because it was deciding factor and time was also less but uh, i repeated it and then i reached uh, 80, 80 81 questions so again even after while giving the question paper i marked two three doubtful uh, questions so it could have led to uh, me passing the prelims but uh, yes this is the strategy which i adopt because uh, uh, once uh, uh, ultimate target is to reach the number of questions that I mentioned 83, 84, 85 because uh, that is what my experience says that uh, less number of questions do not get you through and uh, do mark more questions and uh, do believe into your intuition. So I did my marking in the last, the marking on the OMR sheet. Okay, okay. And uh, many students are interested to know uh, that how many number of questions were actually correct right now. Uh, the official answer keys are not yet out. Official score is also not yet out. But you would have definitely calculated the score afterwards and the range of marks that you were getting with this number of attempts. So this is uh, uh, this question uh, is very difficult for me because uh, when I uh, was out of the exam hall and. Uh, um, I was sitting at some place, uh, so I was randomly checking my answer because I was too afraid to know uh, if I was failing or passing. So I randomly checked uh, my answers like uh, any question uh, I could think of and then I checked it on Google and it is uh, it comes out to be uh, the right answer or wrong answer. It was my luck. So I randomly checked uh, and uh, uh, what uh, uh, happened was uh, I checked all of them in the same manner over a period of two to three days not uh, uh, serial wise but uh, random checking uh, so at the end i got the intuition that uh, i have uh, sufficient uh, question uh, correct so i uh, may get through so i never calculated my marks even today i have my question paper i do not have uh, the marks uh, number of questions which are correct or uh, not correct yeah yeah and that's good because many students keep on referring to various answer keys get confused and was their yes, time yes, of, yes. very much important time uh, at the time of mains preparation and how did you utilize the time between uh, the prelims and mains for the mains preparation did you do lots of answer writing so yes this is a very interesting part what happened was uh, uh, the period between uh, the prelims exam and the prelims result was uh, a very uh, uh, this is the period where you do not have any motivation to study for anything. So you do not uh, have uh, the aim because you do not know if you're passing prelims or not. So it is a very uh, dull phase of the preparation for uh, many, most of the aspirant because all the aspirant community would be knowing because results are a motivation. Passing or failing defines your next path. So the one month period that was there uh, between the prelims exam and the prelims result, I did not study anything. I uh, visited places. I was, uh, I visited uh, on 3rd of uh, June, I visited uh, to another country. I went to uh, Dubai and then I came back on 11th and then I went to my hometown hotel uh, on in between the days. And then on 26th uh, of uh, June, I uh, went to Kashmir. So I was uh, roaming uh, continuously, uh, visiting places, and then uh, I started preparing for means when I went, uh, came back from Kashmir, and uh, then I started an answer writing uh, practice session. So, and then the results came also on 12th of July. So then I started dedicated preparation for means, and uh, it was a very loving phase of my life i enjoyed it a lot uh, very um, very much i enjoyed my mains answer writing very a lot because i did not write too much answers i wrote only eight question papers full uh, question papers for gs and i did not write any optional answer i wrote the optional answer directly into the exam and i also wrote the essay directly into the exam what happened during the that phase what strategy i was adopting for prelims i adopted for mains also the sources were same but the pattern changed and uh, uh, what happened was i used to um, uh, do the answer writing of all those topics that were mentioned in the Rajya Sabha TV debates, the newspapers, the anything. I used to write the answers directly uh, and uh, not the per proper answers, but the structure answers I, I used to write. For example, uh, in case of uh, uh, women issues, what I used to write was not just uh, the topic, but also all the acts related to women in our country, all the articles from the constitution related to uh, women in our country, 
uh, special cases which are uh, from the courts which are related to women so i researched uh, this kind of stuff and put it into a point form so what happened was any kind of question related to women could be answered uh, by bringing a few points from any of these uh, uh, be it a court case article or anything so it was uh, it became very easy to write answers after that so this is the exercise which i did after my optional was finished i did my uh, start my optional after the results came on 12th night so by 13th i started preparing for the optional and till 10th of august or 13th of august i prepared for the optional uh, because optional was very technical and huge also so after 13th i started preparing for general studies and uh, for gs i did all the things i have the notes uh, uh, i have the list of all those things that i uh, you know mentioned like uh, making list of topics on rajya sabha tv so uh, it was a very fascinating exercise i did uh, by watching the, those debates continuously much of the matter of gs2 i uh, used to from the rajya sabha tv debates even gs1 i made notes of of similar pattern of uh, uh, the gs2 uh, like i mentioned the women uh, thing so all the three papers i ma made these notes even for ethics i used to write only keywords for there are a lot of lot of keywords on uh, even simple words which could become you know keywords and in the answer they could attract the uh, checker like uh, oh fancy uh, this uh, meaningful words that were written so i prepared like this for gs 1 2 3 4 and uh, newspaper i would say that i stopped reading newspaper uh, not all together but only uh, the highlights i could use uh, because it was very uh, hectic uh, because uh, during the mains preparation i used to study approximately 12 to 14 hours a day so it was very difficult time because time was very less uh, after 13 to 19th of september it was only one month and six days and in between you have to write answers to uh, you have to try mock test mock papers and other things so uh, forms and all so it was a very tiring exercise but it was a very enjoying enjoyable exercise too so i it got me through okay and uh, hearing to your strategy i got the feeling that it is little unconventional many of the students who clear the examination do lots of answer writing practice and stuff but what i found in your answers and communication and everything is the sense of originality that you want to discuss with few people that you want to hear to various opinions of experts and come up with your own notes so i think this is a very good message to all the aspirants that you don't always need to have a proper strategy which is a uh, told by all the toppers over the years or you also don't need to have that kind of well curated answers engineered by various uh, uh, coaching institutes and stuff but the sense of originality and if your answer and content is good you will definitely get through is what himanshu's example of answer writing and all these things definitely so the bulkiness of my registers which i would like to mention to the aspirants is that i only had three registers of four, 400 pages for gs1 2 and 3 and even those registers were not half full so i have made only these much notes for mains exam and that is only what you could do in the one month you could either write answers or you could either uh, make structures of all the answers even for the science and tech portion i did everything in the similar manner for example uh, say uh, 5g i used to write uh, i had uh, like uh, i'll explain my structure of answer writing answer writing practice structure uh, for example any question on 5g so i wrote uh, one or two definition related relating to 5g like what is 5g Uh, or how is it coming uh, uh, into india then uh, evolution of fig the technical uh, information in point form okay then how it can come into india uh, uh, and what are the issues which uh, uh, are stopping it from coming into india advantages of fig uh, and applications of fig and then conclusion so everything was planned everything uh, any question on 5g could be answered based on these points even if there is no answer in your mind regarding the question which is being asked you can put points from here because of the quality of the points that you are putting the examiner would definitely uh, give you marks uh, since uh, they know that you know uh, uh, you don't do have knowledge uh, you can ro roam around that but you your quality of answer will definitely get you marks right right great and uh, we have already discussed about uh, your uh, 
preparation strategy for entire mains i would just like to ask specific questions about mains preparation two three questions uh, first question of that is you wrote direct first essay in your actual mains examination is what uh, you just told me so how did you manage to do that which were the topics if you remember and uh, how was your structure of the essay so what happened was uh, the day before essay writing uh, was the last day uh, we were uh, we were to study for mains so on that day and the day before on that day whole day the 19th of september uh, what i did was uh, i talked uh, i and there was a friend of there's a friend of mine weber so uh, what we did was we talked about uh, write, how we'll write an essay tomorrow so he also did never practice an essay so we made like the structure i told about the main answers i uh, we talked about it and we came to a conclusion uh, that uh, what the structure of our answer would be so we uh, defined uh, uh, approximately 12 to 13 heads in which i will be writing our answers so uh, for example uh, we know social econ economical political social and religious so these were a head uh, in which our answer could be so historical answers uh, from ancient history med uh, medieval history modern history we could quote examples so this was another head then uh, women related uh, gender related women related uh, age related old age and uh, then children then everything uh, which comes into the social category so this related so th like this we made heads second thing what we did was uh, we learned the names of the ministry of government of india so all those 56 ministries or around so these could be a, a specific point a paragraph in themselves for the essay writing okay so any essay you could you can fit some ministries in some essays so you'll be able to write a, a lot a lot of it because you have the content in your mind you need the point to what you need to write so this was some point so like this we talked for the whole day we talked 5 hours on that day and we evolved a strategy for essay writing and uh, lastly uh, about the quotes and uh, the examples that we uh, think of writing in the essay to make it more attractive so examples also uh, after putting the phone down we searched for examples for of uh, famous women uh, uh, popular uh, artist popular uh, social reformers or etc which which we could mention in our essays which are neutral uh, politically unbiased and which could be used in uh, essay writing so that was the search i did for 2 to 3 hours and then uh, at at night uh, that day uh, what uh, i did was uh, not night approximately 8 to 10 2 hours exercise was that i wrote down 40 to 45 quotes uh, of great leaders and i do still have them and uh, i did uh, learn some of them by heart in those 2 hours and some i could not early morning while going to the uh, hall exam center i just re read a few quotes and i uh, ended up putting them down in the uh, main science, uh, main essay so this was the whole strategy of our essay writing i do not have any material on essay i do not have anything written on essay which i could share with anybody i, I just have uh, just three gs registers which uh, i did for main science writing okay okay, okay. interesting interesting strategy again and again it becomes clear that whatever essay you would have written it was purely original because you have not uh, entirely thought about it before but the result of your continuous study is you are continuously listening to debates i think your hobby is also uh, listening to various youtube channels educational videos yes. so that must have also helped you yes that definitely has helped me because uh, uh, youtube uh, uh, is a platform where you do not only get the content which are related to your gs or uh, upsc we we get content which is related to far uh, different things it could be political a political it could be uh, from scientific background uh, technical in nature so everything uh, because uh, all these ex uh, things uh, you know you we are surrounded by them and we need to use them they are all related to our development we, uh, we can we can use uh, Uh, then in UPSC, for example, uh, I would uh, mention this, and this was a very key thing because it is mentioned in the PIB, one of the PIBs, that uh, uh, the farmer, for example, in agricultural field, uh, when farmers uh, need to sell their goods and customers need to buy the goods from the farmers, so there is a need for platform, and in uh, we could directly write that the grofers. 
is a platform where farmers could directly sell and customers could directly buy and this is mentioned in one of the PIBs. This is not mentioned anywhere outside the content but in the government PIB. So how can we neglect such a source which is offering such a good example uh, and we could, uh, if we quote this example, I'm, I'm sure that uh, the examiner would definitely be uh, uh, amazed to see that uh, this, is, this could be such a thing. So uh, this was the example I could use. So these kind of activities which helped me, uh, you know, quoting examples and then answer writing, uh, so this helped me in getting marks. This could have helped me because marks are yet not out. Yes, 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 definitely. And uh, GS one, two, three. Most of the people have similar strategy, uh, but GS four again becomes a little challenging for few people, especially from the people from technical background like US economics. So, uh, how did you manage to score uh, maybe good marks, or uh, how you prepared uh, for GS four? So, uh, GS also I did uh, likewise as the GS. 1, 2, and 3 because the topics mentioned in the GS4 uh, syllabus are uh, quite broad uh, in their domain because uh, there's no specific but uh, what happens is when we start exploring those topics uh, from um, say any book or say notes from somebody, somewhere so uh, we get to get the feeling of it we, we get what uh, inside what the examiner could ask and seeing the past year question paper there's no definite question that could be asked there's just uh, this uh, term and there is uh, examples related to the term so what i prepared for gs4 was uh, i wrote the term I wrote the definition of the term in uh, own simplest term I could write by using even the Google definition of happiness, the feeling of blissfulness or the Google simplest definition I could write in the explain the, uh, the definition part and then by quoting uh, a few attributes, uh, the examples were the most important thing. I have written at least two to three examples in all the GS4 uh, answers uh, where it was asked to illustrate, describe, or anything. So I have used, even in differentiation, I have used uh, examples. Because examples uh, are something which can get you marks. For the case study, uh, I don't think uh, uh, there is need to solve too many case studies, but there is need to there is need to maintain a structure because in case studies, what happens is there is a, similar to the essay. There is a, uh, the thing about what you need to do in short term, medium term, and long term. That is a thing what you could do with the, the different categories of people, what you, uh, you would do for the middle class, what you would do for the women, for the elderly, for the vulnerable. So you need to maintain a structure, hierarchy. You, may, you make a hierarchy of uh, how will you approach the question. And uh, then uh, even any case of where you need to interact with the villagers or uh, uh, people who are affected. So uh, who will you approach first and how will you approach them by talking, by uh giving uh, uh something to them by influencers or anything so you need to make a strategy on how to answer the questions uh, you were mentioning about the structure of uh, gs4 case studies answers so did you use specific structures like stakeholder approach like ethical issues involved what was the structure that you tried to use uh, technical terms i was not uh, i'm not too much aware of these uh, uh, technical terms of approaches uh, what i did was i as i told you for example a question about uh, a temple uh, being uh, in the middle of a highway and that need to be uh, uh, pushed aside by uh, having conversation with the uh, nearby people surrounding people or the uh, the uh, people who are interested who have interest in that temple so I made an acronym about, uh, I don't remember right now, but it, it, it had a specific structure about uh, how will I approach. Like first I'll uh, do the talking and the last step of it was the uh, legal means, uh, legal uh, means with uh, too much caution, cautious, uh, cautious uh, legal means, force, use of force with caution. So in between we had five to six points about how I will approach to the villagers or about how will I approach to the people. So all those seven points, six points uh, were my answer in every case study. I used, I could use that point, uh, those points and all these answers I wrote. So it became a brilliant answer as per my uh, uh, knowledge. And now moving on to your uh, optional subject, uh, many a times people choose to uh, go with the very famous optional subjects like anthropology, sociology, political science, mostly from arts background, but your optional 
even though it it is from arts background economy but it was a technical subject definitely so how did you choose that what what was the motivation behind choosing that subject it is naturally for you because you were topper in accountancy then ba economics etc so what was your overall strategy for economics optional and how did you manage to do well in that so i would say that uh, there is nothing called famous or infamous uh, optional uh, because uh, once uh, you have to decide about 500 marks that are coming uh, that will come to your way and these for 500 are uh, could break or make the point so once uh, you decide you decide about how, in which subject you get comfortable some people do get comfortable in their own uh, subject in which they have done their graduation post graduation so if it happens then it is very good because uh, then people do not have to study extra anything as extra but the uh, things that they have uh, done in the past they have to revise it and little bit extra syllabus that is added on but if people choose a, a different subject and they get comfortable in that subject and they think that uh, their own graduation subject won't they get the fetch them uh, as high marks as the new subject would then people do get comfortable in that and if uh, it happens then they get marks in that subject also so i would not uh, undermine it that uh, uh, if you are interested in uh, choosing a subject of different uh, nature you do de- should definitely go to it because ultimately what uh, matters is marks uh, that you get in your optional about my uh, choosing my economics optional because uh, i was comfortable with economics in college also i scored well in college i was getting admission into delhi school of economics also but i chose not to go there but to come to upsc and prepare for it so uh, here also i get to uh, got to study the economics part which i have done in college but uh, since uh, uh, the syllabus was huge and uh, it included many a points which were not covered in the du syllabus of economics i have to and do a lot of uh, research and study again but uh, uh, what happens is uh, you need to do it uh, before prelims also during the preparation uh, also and uh, before mains also so a li- bit bit by bit and micro and macro before the prelims so uh, micro and macro prelims uh, before prelims was done with, with the two basic books that we have hl ahuja and uh, uh, froem so these were the two basic books which i read i read them three times uh, once twice before prelims and uh, once uh, before the mains and uh, apart from it then i did uh, the topic wise uh, uh, search for paper one because it was a huge syllabus it was uh, the international economics for international economics do refer to salvatore and uh, for the rest of the syllabus it, either it is covered in these three books or you need to find it through google and other books uh, there are many uh, other books uh you can do it from any book you need to know the concept only okay and for the paper 2 part which was a, a, a um, little theoretical and uh, related to economic development from 1947 and before uh, so um, for that part i used my college uh, books uh, they were basically readings which were given to us in college and there was a subject called indian economic development since 1947 to 91 tun from 91 to 2017 and uh, then also a, a brief uh, economic history of india so i referred to those books uh, which were there and uh, i also used the current affair part uh, which uh, is from newspapers uh, i did not specifically read any uh, uh, economic newspaper like economic times uh, then but uh, i used the general economic terms that were coming into the newspapers so this was uh, the thing that i did in the economics but uh, presentation does matter because economics uh, need diagrams uh, economic concepts uh, use diagrams as well as uh, presentation uh, does matter in the economic exam so a mix of all this uh, might have helped me score good in economics also okay okay uh, moving uh, from mains to optional before the uh, mains to uh, interview part i just have one or two questions about mains preparation so you just mentioned about diagrams did you use um, diagrams flow charts etc in your gs answers essay answers gs4 answer as well yes definitely innovation is the key to success i believe because all the innovation that you do in your gs answers does uh, uh, get uh, your examiner inter- get interested in your answers anything any exam any answer uh, any answer in, in either gs 1 2 or 3 i wrote i 
try to get uh, uh, diagrams into them. Uh, some kind, sometimes maps, for example, in the first question of our GS1 uh, exam uh, about the Bactrian and uh, Greek or Roman uh, ar architecture or sculpture or something, uh, what I did was I did not know exactly what the marks, uh, what the uh, thing I need to write, but the space was too much and I draw, drew a map of India, uh, uh, India, uh, the Pakistan border, and I encircled the sites which were there uh, of the Greek or uh, the Kushan Empire. So this was this is how I filled the page and uh, it might have uh, uh, made the answer look a little attractive and I might have get, got good marks. Okay, okay. You just mentioned that a few of few answers that you were not very sure of as well. You tried to attempt in this way. So, what was the average attempt? You tried to uh, answer all twenty questions in each paper, or you just focused on your quality uh, questions and answers? No, no. Definitely, answering all the question is uh, the key to answer uh, to main smarts because, um, however good you write an answer, you you uh, I think the marks would be uh, would deviate only. Uh, very less from the average marks that everybody gets. So larger number of questions do get you a uh, good number of marks. But uh, it is very difficult. I also uh, used to complete 18 answer and then in 10 minutes that were left, uh, I used to do uh, uh, all the two questions that were left. And uh, it is not that, that all the questions were of uh, approximate, very good quality because there were a few questions where we do not, did not know anything. For example, there were one or two questions about uh, which uh, I would uh, um, name uh, one question. I would mention one question about the Cyber Dome project uh, of Kerala, which uh, I did not know personally anything about it, but I wrote about uh, what I have prepared for the cyber crime and see, uh, everything which I have prepared for from the uh, cyber area. So I wrote that answer. Um, I may have got good marks or bad marks, so we don't know. So yeah. answering questions are, is definitely important. Yeah, yeah, definitely good. Uh, moving to uh, the last part of our discussion, uh, I would just like to know a few of the good, uh, maybe examples of your interview experience. How did you prepare for that? And uh, what was the actual uh, interview experience at the UPS? So my, uh, the results were out on 15th of January, I think. So, then uh, the most important task was filling the DAF and the preferences because uh, we were new. It was the first time that I was filing the DAF and the choices and the preferences, carders, all, it took a lot of time. Even uh, for uh, the last two, one, one and a half year, we didn't have uh, any good passport size picture. So I have to get a picture clicked. So all this was to be done and the exam, uh, the, my interview was on 3rd of March. So it uh, was approximately one hour and 50, uh, one month and 15 days. So Especially 15, about the photo. I remember your photo on your DAF. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was the actual thing because any anywhere people would say that uh, this is uh, this should get changed, but uh, we could not change it. So this was one more thing. So 15 days, I would say 15 or uh, 10 days approximately were spent in filling DAF and finding out uh, uh, mock interview dates and uh, mock interviews are very important. So uh, mock interviews you need to schedule because uh, once the exam schedules are announced, uh, there are uh, institutes running around and uh, students, aspirants running around giving interviews. You do not get slots also. Sometimes sometimes uh, you get slots, but there uh, uh, then uh, something happens. So uh, preparing for that also is important. And then is the study part, what you have to study and revise uh, again, everything. So what I studied for uh, interview was, uh, uh, since budget also came uh, during that period uh, in February end and uh, my optional was economics, so I had to do a little more hard work. I used to read uh, two newspapers a day and uh, one additional economic paper uh, I used to read because uh, it was very important. I was guided because I had to answer economics question in economics terms. Then three, apart from three newspapers, I had to learn my DAF by heart and uh, prepare my DAF, what hobbies I've written, what uh, preferences I've written and uh, the names, so everything that people say that anything could can DAF, from the DAF can be asked. So the DAF was very important. Then uh, I read uh, the economic survey twice, the budget twice, and uh, 
the PIEs of that whole month, two months I uh, read, uh, then all the debates in Rajya Sabha which were there, uh, held during that period from 15th of January to uh, let's, say, let's say 20th of January to 3rd of uh, 2nd of March, I watched all of them once or twice maybe because uh, that's how the communication skills were uh, uh, inculcated in me. And then uh, apart from studying this, I used to uh, study the my optional subject a little bit because uh, uh, economics optional uh, answers uh, need revision. So there was a lot of stuff that had to be done and uh, it was the most, uh, uh, we can't say exciting, but tiring one month of my uh, entire preparation because I used to uh, wake up, study and keep, keep studying till the end of the night. So this was all we we did. Uh, I did in the optional. And uh, one more thing that uh, mock mock test that uh, I did. I gave many mock tests because uh, I never faced any interview in my life, uh, uh, and that too of this scale, it was very big interview. And so I had to give mock tests to build up my confidence. But uh, after uh, two or three, I got that confidence i got the faith in myself that uh, what uh, what uh, maximum could the panel uh, give me 100 marks not uh, kill me so i went there without any fear of failing uh, uh, and without any fear of anything so uh, i went there uh, by uh, i used to sit there calmly and answer questions uh, all the answers which I could give was fine, not give, that was also fine. And I, I used to be pretty calm in all the mocks that I gave. So this might have been similar uh, in the actual interview too. So I get uh, good marks in the interview also. Any specific examples of uh, actual UPSC interview experience? Yeah, so actual UPSC uh, experience was also good because uh, uh, my interview was the first uh, in the entire session of afternoon. So I went there and uh, everybody had their lunch. We were not having, uh, did not have any lunch because it could uh, get you dizzy or sleepy. Uh, so uh, after we went inside, we filled the details and uh, did the formalities. I was called and uh, so I was told five minutes before that uh, I'll be the first one to get, go inside. So I went inside and uh, there is a habit that I used. To, uh, I, I drink water before I go inside. So I uh, did that and then went, in, went inside, uh, went inside the interview hall. So there were five members. Uh, it was quite a good experience to see all of them. So I said, uh, they asked me to sit down. I sat down and then ultimately, the interview started and one thing that uh, was uh, different was which uh, uh, later took uh, i got a fear of that uh, i was a very a little sweaty inside the hall uh, and uh, i had to take out my hanky and uh, uh, rub my head so it could have gone either way i thought it could go wrong because they uh, they could found me nervous and uh, uh, too nervous and too sweaty but uh, then uh, it could have gone the other way also that I could uh, take out a hanky and rub my forehead. So this was uh, these were things that were happening inside. So there were oh, light moments too. There were uh, uh, very dark moments too because there were continuous three questions that I could not answer from economic optional and that too a very common question of Nobel Prize uh, winner. So. I could not answer the basic, uh, the deep in-depth theory behind the uh, Nobel Prize this year, but there were light moments too. So it was all in all good interview. It went uh, for approximately 35 to 40 minutes and uh, I think I did well. Great. So as we can see uh, from all of your stages of UPSC, be it prelims, be it mains, be it interview, in all the three stages, you had some challenges. For example, you mentioned about prelims examination in first round, you could only answer about 55 in few of the main answers. You were not knowing, you were not finding enough time. In interview as well, there were few simple questions that you could not answer. But all this still you were able to manage because of your persistence, because of your consistency, because of your extracurricular reading that you have been doing. And because of all that, you are 
uh, as a person and that's why i would like to ask you one last question that you were very excellent at academics you had 10 pointer in your 10th you had 96% in 12th then you had 83% in your graduation so you would you could have got very good opportunities uh, for post graduation level studies as well you could also have got high paying jobs in private sector still you chose civil services so what was your motivation or the driving force to choose civil services as your career option and how now as you have been chosen as a uh, is officer now how you plan to use your powers responsibly for the welfare of the people so a part of the question was also asked in the actual upsc interview that why i chose for upsc and not pursue my studies further see, see uh, st- studying for the private jobs all are a very good uh, profession in themselves but uh, the kind of uh, thing which i always wanted to do like the diversity the challenges that a job can offer you and the environment you get to work inside uh, by interacting directly with the people you want to work for so this kind of experience was uh, available readily in upsc by being an ias officer so i um, chose to become an ias officer to uh, uh interact to to, uh, to solve the problems that uh, are around us that are that we surround and uh, you know while while you prepare for upsc your motivation your dedication uh, your inspiration to get to, into the services becomes uh, uh, stronger itself because when you st- uh, read newspapers when you read the sources when you read that government has been implementing programs uh years and years and years and they're not uh, being uh, 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 they're, they're not yielding results so you decide in your mind that uh, yes i uh, should go there and i should look for problems that are hurdles that are there and i should also try to solve the problems maybe because uh, uh, maybe uh, i could i have the capability to use my sources my knowledge and uh, implement those programs in the right manner and uh, be resourceful be helpful to and we could be able to do something for my country that was the biggest motivation and uh, i would not undermine any private sector jobs or any uh, further study post graduation phd these are all very good profession and uh, everybody do play a role in themselves uh, in building the uh, our whole nation as an entire uh, entire nation so they were also good profession but the uh, cho- uh, the the off uh, the offers that uh, uh, could uh, come and for me uh, for me and uh, the jobs the, the challenges that could come to me in this job and the work and the number of people i'll be able to affect with my work in this job uh, i thought could not i was not i won't be able to do in the other jobs so i chose for civil service that's great that is it and your spirit to serve the people and to serve the nation and the motivation to do that all through the medium of civil services is definitely good and definitely uh, worth looking up to and also i would like to uh, congratulate you once again and thank you so much to help our students help our aspirants uh, who are appearing for this year's examination and next years by your uh, very rightful tips that you gave thank you so much thank you so much and all the best to all the aspirants for this year Thank you thank you very much